Welcome to the SolidCam Professor video series called Jumpstart, the easy way to get started with SolidCam. Let's start off with part one of our first lesson, where we will create a milling cam part. In this video, we'll be familiarizing you with selecting a CNC controller to handle our G-code output, creating a home position or coordinate system for the part, adding stock material to the part, and defining our target model. First, We'll need to open our example SOLIDWORKS part. Please note that this part file does not come with the installation of SOLIDCAM. The example file will be included with this video tutorial. The part file can either be opened directly from our Getting Started interactive guide or by first downloading it here from the website. I saved my downloaded part file to a SOLIDCAM training folder that I've created on my C drive. I recommend you do the same. Now let's open SOLIDWORKS. Let's go to File in the SOLIDWORKS menu and select Open. When the dialog opens, let's look in the C drive under Computer. Select the SOLIDCAM training folder from the list, and then choose the simple cover onesldprt and open it. Before we begin, let's discuss our automatic CAM part definition settings. In the SOLIDWORKS menu, I'll click on SOLIDCAM and select SOLIDCAM settings. Under Automatic CAM part definition in the list, Note there are four important sections. Definition of CNC controller, definition of coordinate system, definition of stock, and definition of target. By default, these settings are enabled and can be especially helpful for a 30-day trial test drive user. Keeping them enabled automates the CAM part definition process so one can start evaluating the software by immediately adding operations. For the purpose of this lesson, we will disable the automatic CAM part definition settings by deselecting the appropriate checkboxes. If you are a customer renewing your subscription, please verify that your automatic CAM part definition settings are disabled before starting this lesson. While in our solid CAM settings, go to CAM part in the list. Note that we now have two modes for saving a new CAM part, internal and external. External is typical for CAM parts saved prior to 2013 and uses the .prt or compressed.prz file extensions. External handles the saving of a CAM project by building and working in an assembly. A copy of the original SOLIDWORKS model is generated and all CAM data is created and stored outside the original .sldprt file. External is beneficial for CAM users without access to an engineering group's original SOLIDWORKS model. Although the CAM data is saved separately, it remains associative to the original .sldprt file. Internal, on the other hand, manages our CAM project with a single SOLIDWORKS model file, using a part-only mode. The CAM part is created and all CAM data is stored inside the original .sldprt file. Internal is especially beneficial for users who build both the CAD and CAM, bringing SolidCAM's integration to a whole new level. For the purpose of this lesson, and moving forward with our interactive guide, let's set the radio button to Internal. By default, the Internal mode will be selected upon creating any new CAM parts. Click OK to close the dialog. Here we have this simple cover ready to go into SolidCAM for programming. We need to create a new CAM part using the SolidCAM drop-down menu. Go to SolidCAM, New, and select Milling. This new milling part dialog handles the saving of our CAM project. The first section shows us that we will create our CAM part using the new internal mode, which we just selected as the default in our SolidCAM settings. In the next section, the first field displays the name of our CAM part. SolidCAM uses the SolidWorks part name by default with underscore milling, since this is a milling project. Next, a description can be provided to accompany the current CAM part. And the third field is just showing us exactly which SolidWorks model is being used for our CAM project and its directory location. Several CAM parts can be created and saved within a single SolidWorks model file. Upon creating any new CAM part, the current ones will be listed here under Existing CAM Parts. When opening a single SOLIDWORKS model file with several CAM parts, SOLIDCAM will prompt you and ask which one of the existing CAM parts you would like to open. When we click OK, it brings us to our Milling Part Data dialog. 
Our first step is selecting a CNC controller to handle our G-code output. For this example, we'll use a G-milling post for a 3-axis HAS by selecting it from the drop-down menu. Next, we will create our coordinate system, also known by many people as their home position. The machine coordinate system defines the origin for all machining operations of the CAM part. It corresponds with our built-in controller functions. Let's click Define under Coordinate System to display the Coordsys Manager. Now, we are presented with several options to define our coordinate system. We can define the coordinate system origin position and axes orientation by selecting Model Faces, Vertices, Edges, or even SolidWorks coordinate systems. We'll use our first option and also our most commonly used option called Select Face. By choosing Select Face, the moment we click on a specific face in the SolidWorks graphics area, the coordinate system will be created with the z-axis perpendicular to that face. For this lesson, we will select top center of model box from the Place Coordsys Origin 2 dialog. Again, let's select any face of our model in the SolidWorks graphics area. Our coordinate system will be automatically created at the very top center of that surface, as shown here. The coordinate system axes are represented graphically by color. The x-axis is represented by the red line, the y-axis by the green line, and the z-axis by the blue line. After we finish this process, let's click on the green check mark at the top left of our coordinates manager. This will bring us to our next window where we can control our default machining levels. Let's quickly run through what these represent. The tool start level is the Z level where the tool comes to directly after a tool change and where the tool length compensation is activated. The clearance level is the Z level where the tool will retract to when moving from one area of the part to the next. The part upper level defines the height of the upper surface to be milled and the part lower level defines the lower surface to be milled. We'll accept these default Z levels by clicking OK. We have just created our first coordinate system, Mac 1 Position 1. Let's click OK to accept. Our next step is creating and defining our stock. Let's click on the stock button in the stock and target model section of the milling part data dialog. There are several ways of creating and defining our stock in SolidCam. For the purpose of this lesson, I will use our default option called box. Then, we'll select a surface on our part model in the SolidWorks graphics area. A green bounding box will automatically appear around the outside of our target model. We have control over how much material is added to the target model in six directions. We can simply enter the appropriate values under the expand box at section on the left. So for example, in our X plus and X minus directions, as well as our Y plus and Y minus directions, we'll set the values to 2 millimeters past the part. In our Z plus direction, we'll add only 0.5 millimeters of stock material to the top of our part. Lastly, we'll add 5 millimeters in the Z minus direction so we have material to clamp onto when we are machining this part. As we alter the numbers in the dialog boxes, Notice the stock material is updated graphically in real time. Once we have these dimensions set, let's click on Add Box to CAD Model so that this box representing our stock is shown throughout the lesson. We can accept our stock by clicking OK. Our stock is now complete and we can move on to defining our target. The target is the final shape of our CAM part after the machining. SolidCAM uses the target model for gouge checking during Solid Verify simulation. To define our target, we begin by selecting the target button. Then, simply select the target model from the SolidWorks graphics area. It will be listed as Solid 1 in the Type section on the left. Our target is now defined, and we'll click OK to move back to the Milling Part Data dialog. Our CAM part is now fully defined, and we'll select OK to move on to our Solid CAM Manager. You'll notice that our CAM part selections are listed here in the CAM tree and we're able to make changes at any time if necessary. Now we can begin adding toolpath to machine our part. And this concludes part one of our first lesson in the SolidCAM Jumpstart series, where we've created a milling CAM part. Thanks for watching. Please join us for part two of our first lesson, 
where we will add a face milling operation, go through our workflow in the operation dialog, and simulate our toolpath.